we all have repetitive things that we do in our email. Whether it's frequently emailing the same person or team, filing emails into folders, or sending a reply and deleting the original message. I'll show you how you can automate these repetitive steps in Outlook by using Quick Steps today on Tuesday Tech Training. Hello and welcome to Tuesday Tech Training. My name is Jennifer Stewart. I'm the owner of Gateway Productivity and I'm a tech and productivity trainer. Today I'll show you how to use Quick Steps in Outlook. Quick steps are automated actions in Outlook, and you determine what they are. You can automatically start an email to a specific person. You can automatically file an email into a folder. You can automatically categorize something. You can automatically start a reply email and delete the original email, and many more options. Before we jump into how to create the quick steps, take a moment to think about what repetitive things you do. Are there people that you email multiple times a day or at least once a day? Are there folders that you frequently are filing emails into? Think through your typical day and what you do in Outlook and see what repetitive tasks you're doing. Once you have your list of a few things that you're doing repetitively in Outlook, come to your inbox. And your quick steps area is probably something you see all the time, but then you probably don't really see it because you may not use it. It's this box right up here, top middle. And what we're going to do is here they have built in things that they think you might need. But we're going to go to where we can see all of the options. We click this tiny little down arrow. And that opens your quick steps menu. Here we can see the preset options that Microsoft thought might be helpful to you. But know that you don't have to use all of these. I would recommend keeping, keeping them here just because they're good templates for you to use, but you don't have to use them. You can put yours up in front of the ones that exist. So we'll go through each of these and talk through the options and also know that you can create a custom option, which we'll go through later. First, we have the move to. This is built to move to a folder and mark an email as read. We can look at the options by clicking edit right here. Here you can see you can give this a name and I would probably back up here and do a duplicate so that you still have the template of what they originally created, but that's completely up to you. If you know that you will never use this the way they have it set up, then go ahead and edit the original. But if you want to keep that as your template, then you can do a duplicate. So we'll do that now. So here it puts copy of move to, but you can name this whatever you'd like. And I'll do my folder quick step. And here you can choose the action. You can see that this is built for moving an email into a folder, but you can click this drop down and choose anything you'd like. That's why I recommend keeping that template so that in case you get lost in here, maybe make some changes you didn't mean to, you can always get back to that template option. So I'm going to keep this as move to folder, and then I choose my folder here. Here I'm going to choose what folder I have available. Here it will show the folders that you've used recently, but if you'd like a different one, you can choose other folder. It will bring up the entire list of folders. And for those of you who have multiple email accounts pulling in, you can file an email from one account in a folder from another account. So here you have everything for Gateway Productivity and out, at Outlook. All of my folders for that are here. But if I needed a folder from a different email address, I can go to these other ones, open them up, and grab a different folder. Since we have a Microsoft email highlighted, I'm going to go ahead and choose Microsoft at this time. And we'll click OK. So it will move to the Microsoft folder and it will mark the email as read. That is what would happen with this quick step if I saved it right now. I also have the option to do other things. I can have it mark the email as unread. I can have it set importance and many other options. I would take the time to go through here. We're not gonna go through all the different options, but you can build just about anything you can think of here. That's why I said start with thinking through what you're doing repetitively, because then you can build one of these to be anything you need. 
If you get overwhelmed with all the options, go ahead and stick with what the templates offer you. Now that I have set my quick step, I can choose to have a shortcut key, which means you can do this on the keyboard instead of having to click the button. I'm not someone who really uses the shortcut keys, so I will skip that step. So when I finish this, you can see I have the My Folder Quick Step as my second one. If I'd like to move that up so that it's further up in this list up here, I can use my up arrow. And once I would click OK, you can see it now shows as the first option. Let's move on to the next option here, which is our to manager. And this is a forward. That's the forward arrow, the blue arrow. And so this is saying that they think maybe you might want a shortcut to forward something to your manager. What that would do is the email you have selected when you clicked this button would start a forward and it would automatically populate who it goes to. Whether you have a manager or not, if you're frequently forwarding things to someone, this can be a very powerful quick step. Let's duplicate this one. And then I am going to say that this one is to the accountant because I send a lot of receipts to my accountant. Again, you can see with this quick step, we have a drop down with lots of other options, but it was originally created to be a forwarding option. You can do a reply, reply all, all of these different items, but we're gonna stick with the forwarding. And I'm just going to type in an email address here. If you have this person in your address book, you can always click on to and go find it that way. But I am going to type this in. And once I've typed that in, that's the end of this action. Now we have all of the pieces to forward an email to my accountant. Let's see what this looks like when we use it. We'll finish this and we'll click OK here. You can see my to accountant shows up here because I didn't move it around. So we'll say that this is an email that I need to send to my accountant. When I click the to accountant, it starts an email forward. You can see right here, this is how you know it's a forward in the subject line, and it is to the person that I designated. The next option built into Outlook is this team email. This is if you have a group of people that you're frequently emailing to. But what's nice is you can use this even if you're emailing to just one person frequently. Let's duplicate this one. And I send to Sally a lot. So I'm gonna choose Sally. And what it's gonna do is it's going to create a new message. And in here, I can put Sally's email address. And one thing I want to point out is that Outlook gives you even more options about this new message. If you click on show options here, you can actually pre-populate the subject, put flags, importance, and you can even put text into the email before it's created. And if this is always a cookie cutter message, it's always the same thing, you can fill all of this out, check this box that says automatically send after a one minute delay. And so it will pop the new message up, you can double check it, but then it will automatically send it off to Sally and you don't even have to edit it if there's nothing you need to do. For my situation, I am frequently emailing Sally, but always about something different. So what this does is it opens a new email to Sally for me without me having to fill in her email address every time. Although it seems like that's not saving a lot of time, every click and every keystroke that you can eliminate helps you save time. Now that I have this one filled out, I'll click on finish and okay here so we can see it. Here we can see Sally shows up when I click on that. It opens up a new email and it's made out to Sally. With the next option, I'll show you how to remove parts of a quick step and add parts. The one that's pre-built is this one that says done. And we can see at a glance here, this is one that marks the email as complete, moves it to a folder and marks it as read. I'm going to duplicate this so I can keep my template. And this one, I know that I don't really use completion of emails as something that I do. So instead, I'm going to make this one creating a task. So I'm going to put in here, create task. And then since I don't use the completion in my email, I'm going to click here and I would like to create a task with an attachment. But the rest of this makes sense for me because once it's created a task, 
I don't necessarily need that email in my inbox. So I do want it to move to a folder. And we'll say that that is the Asana folder that I want it to go into. And I also do want it to mark as red. So this is where we can change a part of the original template. If there's a part of the template that you don't want, let's say you don't want it to mark as red, you can click the trash can to eliminate that part of the quick step. Once I click finish and okay here, we can see at the top, I don't see the one that I just created. It's because it is further down than these. So you'll use this little down arrow right here to get to what you just created. And again, in this screen here, if you need to move that up, let's say I wanted that quite a bit higher, I can move that all the way up to here. And then I can scroll back up here and here it is, it's the second option as I moved it. We'll test this quick step on this email here. We'll create a task. You can see it pops up the task. Here's my attachment. I'm not sure why it doesn't look like an attachment yet, but it will. And then I can set all of my task settings and I'm going to save and close that. The last pre-built option is to reply and delete. This is what I talked about at the very beginning of our video, where you can reply to a message and automatically delete the original message. I'll duplicate this so that I keep my templates and we'll see what this one looks like. Since this one also involves an email, like when we created a new message, you have this show options right here. Now, if you always will be replying to the same person, you could put that here, but if you leave it empty, it will automatically reply back to who the email was from. And again, you can add things in here. It automatically puts the RE for reply, but you can change that to whatever you'd like. And you can add all this other information in the same way we talked about before, you can automatically have it send if this is preset and you don't need to customize anything. We can click hide options to shrink that back up. And then our second action is for it to delete the message. If that's not something you want, you can always click the trash can to get rid of that option. If you need to delete one of your quick steps, you can click on it and click the delete button right over here, and then it disappears. For additional options for your quick steps, you can click this new button here and move to folder we've done, categorizing. If you're not familiar with categories, there's another video about that. You can mark something with a flag and move it. Again, you can do bits and pieces of these. You could do half of it, but not the other half. This is all customizable. And this new meeting is where you can create a new appointment automatically with a specific person. If you're constantly creating appointments with the same people, you can have this set up as a quick step. As you saw before, you can create tasks from emails. And then you have your option to create custom quick steps. So not only can you customize the ones that are already there and really make them whatever you want, if you want to start from scratch, you know exactly what you want, then I would start with this custom. And let me show you one more time. We go to new and the last option is custom. And here's where you have all of the options and you can build exactly what you want from scratch. The last thing I'll show you is this reset to defaults button. Right here, if you've made a mess of your quick steps and you are afraid you've lost a bunch of stuff and it's not working the way you want to, you can always reset to the defaults. When I click on this, it's gonna ask you again because any changes you've made will be lost. You can say yes, and then it goes right back to your original templates. The main thing to remember when you're creating quick steps is don't create too many at once. Create the ones that will help you the most first, and that might be just one or two. Get used to using them and see if it's even something that works for you. Because if it doesn't, you don't want to have spent tons of time creating all of these quick steps. Just start with the ones that will help you the most. And also it can be overwhelming with all the customization available. So it's better just to start simple. A lot of my clients, find that this is a lot of fun and they like having all these options to automate things that they do on a daily basis. And if that's true for you, then have at it, have fun with it, and you can save a ton of time without really realizing the time you were spending in the first place. Have you had a light bulb moment from this training?
If so, please let me know in the comments below. You can also put a question down there if you have a question about anything in this video, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. You can also give the video a thumbs up, or you can share it with someone you think could benefit from the information. And be sure to subscribe by clicking the red button below. Once you do that, you'll see a bell icon. That will give you a notification each time a new video is posted. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.